Hey Opto fam, so this vlog is dedicated to show you what to look for in a good rotation site. I'm gonna share with you my journey of how I got to Fayetteville, North Carolina at the Fort Bragg Army Base, and then I'll show you how I chose all of my sites after that. Hey Opto fam, so I don't know if you've heard yet, but Johnson & Johnson Vision just released a new website called jnjvisionpro.com. It's a brand new website to help students, practicing ODs, and other staff members, the in-office help that we all need to grow our practices and future practices. And various needs can be met through product ordering where contact lens supplies, artificial tears, and lid wipes can all be sent to our patients' homes directly. But not only that, but there's online learning opportunities for everybody in your practice. In addition to that, there is patient educational videos such as contact lens insertion and removal training. And last but not least, practice resources such as marketing tools. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check out jnjvisionpro.com to learn more and to register for access. Now let's get back to the video. Good morning OptoFam. Um, it's about 4.55 a.m. And we're about to move me out to my first rotation site in North Carolina. And we have about 12 hours on the road today. So you better believe we're gonna make some big cups of coffee. So let's do it. I remember when I first started doing research for my rotation sites, I was in the summer of my third year. And it's a really important decision because this is probably your most fun year in school. So do you wanna you know, go to places that you've always wanted to go to in the US? Do you wanna spend that time uh, going into certain specialties you might wanna get into? Or do you want to spend that time close to home next to your family and friends? So it's a really important choice and don't take it lightly. I remember I was pretty nervous not knowing if I was gonna get the sites that I wanted, but if you think about it, even if you don't get those sites, schools won't have rotation sites that they know are bad sites. They just wouldn't have it on their roster. So chances that you even get a decent site if you don't get your top picks is still pretty good. Most of my friends and students that I talked to were all really happy when we found out too. So there's no need to worry. So guys, we're almost to St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we're at a standstill right now. We have, unfortunately there's a truck on fire down that way, so we're just waiting for it to clear up. And uh, Google Maps said it's probably about an hour and 16 minute wait, so we're just waiting around. Finally we made it here, it took us about 14 hours today because of that one uh, truck that caught on fire, but we made it. All right guys, so I wanna go ahead and let you know what my criteria was to go ahead and choose my sites. The first and foremost would be previous student reviews. What was cool about our school, and I'm sure this is done other places too, is that there were binders available to us of multiple sites, and at the end of each summary of each site, there would be a, a list of student reviews that would show the realities of the site. I took that seriously. I really read into those a lot more than the site itself. Um, because most sites will just um, go ahead and make sure that they look good on paper, but the reality of the site is going to be in the student review, so make sure you look into that. And so when I chose my sites, I entered my top three picks for each quarter in hopes of getting at least a couple of those into what's called the spin. The goal of the spin is to give you your top picks. And so once that's done, you can either accept it or deny it. And if you deny it, then you have to go into what's called a scramble. And a scramble is essentially the remaining sites to uh, spit out what's left, essentially. So usually you're locked into the scramble um, with whatever sites they spit out after that. So you have to really make sure that you really want to reject the first spin. All right, off uh, on the road for day number two. We're driving about six hours to Nashville. And where are we gonna go? Uh, Music Row Nashville. All right, we'll see you there. So guys, we just made it to uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, we're getting dropped off downtown to go ahead and try to find a tour and then uh, maybe some dinner afterwards. So here's the town, we're just approaching it. What do we got on the left? This is the downtown area. It's the honky tonk road. The honky tonk road. Look at that. See, this is the pictures that we see. You know, yeah. the lights and stuff. <laughs> right. Oh, with the sugar drive. That's right. <laughs> All 
right, so the second criteria that I looked into was patient volume. I really looked at sites that had a lot of patient exposure for the students um, because I'm a firm believer that with uh, the more practice you have seeing patients and the more you practice the correct way, the better doctor you'll be, which sounds very obvious. Um, but let me put it into perspective for you. I remember I talked to somebody one day about um, Roger Federer and he had asked me, why do you think Roger Federer is one of the greatest tennis players of all time? And he had said because he had practiced hitting a tennis ball the right way, that is, over and over and over and over again until he became one of the best. And I think that's true across all platforms, across all careers, any skill that you undertake. Um, the more exposure you have, the more you practice it over and over again and doing it the right way, that is, the better you'll become at that skill and that's no different in optometry. So number three would be the type of site. I have an interest in low vision disease and TBI, so I chose my sites according to that as well. Making our last stop, right before we move me in, we're gonna stay at a hotel, and we're about nine hours away from Fort Bragg. Almost there. Bye guys. We'll see you, bud. Love you. Hey guys, so I just moved into my first Airbnb for my first rotation. We have the house right behind me here. So uh, let's go take a look. This is probably gonna be the closest I'll ever get to being on MTV crib, so let's take a look at my crib. So guys, last but not least, the one thing that made me most anxious, I think, out of everything, you know, that was moving to a new place for um, for a while, and uh, I was a little bit scared. I'm a you know I'm a single guy, not in a relationship, and I'm aware that this advice doesn't apply to those in relationships um, or people that move with you to sites. Transitioning into fourth year and having to deal with the hustle and bustle in the clinic um, and then coming home to, you know, without anybody else to turn to, I, I might feel a little uncomfortable, I might feel a little down, um, and then the fear of having that repeat over and over again, um, day after day, kind of uh, really got me in a, an anxious mindset. And that's something I kind of struggled with before moving out here, but at the same time, you know, it's really important that we all have things that we can turn to, things that make us happy. Joins Johnson talks about having anchors, and what he means by that are things that make you happy, whether it be, for me, you know, playing guitar, or going to the gym, or um, hanging out with friends on the weekends, or calling friends and family, you know, that's are really, uh, those are all really big pillars in my life that I try to keep up with um, regularly. So whatever your anchors are, make sure you keep doing those so you keep having a sense of self because it's kind of easy to, you know, I don't know if losing yourself is the right word, but, you know, kind of feeling out of place and, you know, less self-aware the more anxious you might get. And I know this is super real stuff, but, um, that's the reality of it, and a lot of people won't talk about it um, because they don't want to feel vulnerable, but I know myself well enough, I know what makes me happy, so I'm not afraid to share it with you guys. But on a lighter note, you have to know that everybody else in fourth year is going through the same exact thing. So knowing that, knowing that you're not the only one going through it, having your anchors will really help you out. So know yourself, know your anchors, and you'll get through it. My host, Hostess, I should say, is here. Her name is Susanna. What are we making here? Actually, making a few de uh, decorations. I got a birthday coming up, so I'm gonna hang these in a tree, a little DIY, but it'll work. Say hi. <laughs> if you guys ever need a place to stay and she's still around, uh, she's a great hostess and she gives you free towels, so if you want free towels, right. you have it. <laughs> all you want, all you can help. <laughs> That's right. So guys, I was kind of thinking, I mean, ever since board's finished and fourth year is here, there's a lot of free time after after work and also on the weekend. So, I mean, what better way to find friends than uh, on Bumble BFF? 
because I'm a millennial and obviously I'm not going to talk to people in real life. So let's take a look. Jason, he's 21. In his profile he says, adventurous as I am lazy, I am just as likely to agree to a six mile hike. Swipe left. No, that's, we're done. Looks like I'm out of swipes, unfortunately. So let's check on uh, Bumble date status. See what's going on there. All right, we have Julie. She's a physical therapist. If you don't love The Office, I know where this is going. Another one that likes The Office. We all like The Office. Stop talking about it. Swiping left, you're basic. D, 22 years old. UTSA graduate student, obsessed with my dog. Oh really? Who doesn't like dogs? Okay, 5-0, 6.7. 6.7 miles away, swiping right. Oh, I swipe left. Gotta get that back. Okay, swiping. No match, man. What's going on? Starting to look uh, deeper into myself and see what's wrong with me. Probably a lot. What do you mean? You wanna swipe on people's profiles with me? Oh. Okay. See ya. All right guys, so onto a more lighthearted note, not so serious. Once you have your sights figured out, then you wanna go ahead and figure out where you wanna live because you'd be pretty surprised by how fast time goes throughout your fourth year, so lining up everything in advance is very helpful. But if you go the Airbnb route, you have to make sure that you don't have anybody choosing, you know, a couple days in the middle of when you'll need to be at that site because if that happens, then that place is completely unavailable for you. And those go pretty quickly, especially in desirable places to live. If you go the apartment route, um, I know some apartment complexes have up to a six month minimum stay. So if you need to be there for only three months, then that's not going to work either. Um, so make sure you do your research well in advance there as well. Guys, I want to finish this off by saying choosing rotations is such a personal choice. There's a lot that goes into making these choices. And it's very important to know that it's, you're not the only one feeling stressed out by making these choices. Um, this is supposed to be the most fun near in school, so make it the very best that you can. Man, it's been a long day. Today they just had me do in-processing, set up my computer, um, they got my badge, it looks like. But anyways, my site is a primary care site, but they're also expanding to be uh, TBI, pre and post-op surgery, and also disease. We also have contacts going on too. They're starting to branch out into specialty contacts. So I really like this site. It was really highly rated by uh, previous students, and there's a lot of different specialties you can kind of get after. Um, and so personally, I'm not seeing patients until a couple days down the road, because it takes forever in the military to get all my documents, get my computer set up, get me in the system. Um, but that's just how it is. Um, but guys, I wanted to uh, talk about like what I was thinking about you know, transitioning into fourth year, because b between third and fourth year, it's a huge jump. You're not just seeing two or three pa patients a week like you do in third year. You're in seeing any anywhere from six to 14, 15, depending on your site. And at my site, the efficiency goal is to get a, an exam done in around 45 minutes or so, which is doable. Um, it's a lot to do. Um, but the more and more you do it, it's just gonna come second nature, I feel. And the docs are always there for you. You know, if you have any questions, just just ask them. Get as much information as you can because rotations um, are not only just about you know seeing patients on your own, but also a great shadowing experience for the whole year. And uh, one doc was telling me that if you're gonna take anything from your your fourth year is learn at least one thing from every doctor every tech everybody you interact with whether it's a good thing or a bad thing um, and incorporate that into your style and that'll make you a better doctor so i'm gonna really try to do that for me at each site um, but right now guys let's get out of here um, i'm gonna go try to find a gym Hey guys, so I just finished my second day and I think I'm gonna end the vlog here, but I did wanna share with you an observation I had about uh, the people I'm working with in my clinic. Conversations are often lighthearted, but situations aren't always that way. Being able to adjust from a serious situation that requires empathy to a fun, lighthearted, you know, kind of goofing around type of um, 
vibe is is very important you know not only as a doctor but as a well-rounded person in general so it's something that's not new I'm sure you guys have all thought about you know that in your life at some point but um, I just wanted to bring that to life Opto fam thanks so much for watching keep staying bold keep staying passionate and we'll see you next time